There are some amazing people out there, but you have to pay close attention or you might not see them. There was an all-star professor at Harvard. He had a brilliant career, successful writer, also a priest. And then he gave up his career. He gave up the prestige of a post at Harvard. He gave up his life of recognition and rewards, and he did it <clears throat> to become an aide in a group home. He took care of a severely disabled 25-year-old man named Adam. Adam could not speak. Adam could not dress himself. Adam could not walk by himself. He couldn't feed himself. He didn't cry or laugh and he only occasionally made eye contact. It took that brilliant priest an hour and a half every morning to wake Adam up, give him his medication, do his morning toilet, and feed him breakfast. And when that priest wrote about Adam, this is what he said. It is I, not Adam, who gets the main benefit from our friendship. Adam teaches me that what makes us human is not our mind, but our heart. Not our ability to think, but our ability to love. Why? I have sometimes had the privilege of making speeches to people whose job is to care for the profoundly disabled. I have presented to special education teachers. I have presented to direct care workers of group homes. These are the people who take care of my daughter and those fragile people like her. I always thank them. And I always tell them that they are not paid anywhere near enough for the work that they do. Because let me tell you, it is hard work. I know this from years of struggle with my own daughter, and I know this from years of observation of the special needs community. You know what these workers always tell me? They tell me they love the difficult, wounded people they serve. They tell me, yes, it's hard, but it's a mission. It's a calling. They tell me it's not about the money. It's about the people they serve. So let me say this. When I was younger, I admired superstars. I was drawn to watch athletes like the ones who are going to be on TV later this afternoon in the Super Bowl. I was drawn to watch actors and celebrities. But now, now that I'm older, I admire kind people. I am drawn to people who are caring and who are kind. And I believe they are the only hope for our world. And you know, I bet people who hear my sermons these days sometimes think, okay, I get it. Be kind. He says it all the time. Can't he get off that topic for a while? Well, I would be delighted to move on to some other topic. But you know, I'm still working on it in my own life. And I still see the need in our church and in our community. And I still see the need in our nation and in our world. I don't hear much conversation about kindness apart from in church. And I believe that people who are kind and caring are the only hope for our world. The Dalai Lama is one of the most admired and loved people in the world. He is the leader of Tibetan Buddhists. But I don't think that's why he is so loved. He often says, kindness is my true religion. I think he's loved because he has a zone of joy and kindness around him. I believe that all the greatest religious leaders have that zone of joy and kindness around them. I absolutely believe that Jesus did during his days on earth. A grandmother once took her son to the zoo and they spent the day together there. In one spot there was an artist doing some face painting on the children.
kids could get their face painted with tiger paws. Well, this grandma and her grandson got in line for this. Now, this little boy had a face full of freckles. And a little girl standing near them in line looked at him and said, you have so many freckles, there's no place to paint. And the little boy was embarrassed, and he bowed his head. Immediately, his grandma knelt down right beside him, and she put her arm around him, and she said, Honey, I love your freckles. When I was a little girl, I always wanted freckles. Freckles are beautiful. And she traced her finger on his cheek. The little boy looked up at her and said, Really? Grandma smiled and said, Really? Well, you tell me one thing that's more beautiful than freckles. That grandson looked at his grandmother with, with love and said, Wrinkles. <laughs> now there's a sweet story of kindness. We may not be able to make it to the level of Jesus or the Dalai Lama, but maybe we can make it to that level. One of our scriptures today is maybe my favorite line from the entire Old Testament, the entire Hebrew Bible. It's from the prophet Micah. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God?